Good morning and welcome back to another exciting Blue Glow Electronics um, repair videos. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to make a video on this, I was just simply uh, working on a turntable this morning. Um, it's one I picked up and I was just trying to get it working properly. And so first thing I did was took the belt off of course, pulled the platter off and then this is basically what you have. This is a uh, modular component system 6503 belt driven automatic turntable, otherwise known as a JCPenney Techniques. So, uh, Techniques made turntables for JCPenney to resell under this uh, MCS name. And um, th this is basically an SL23 Techniques table. Um, with slightly different um, knobs and plastic top, um, plastic cover here. Everything else about it is uh, it's an SL23. Anyway, what what I do with an SL23? First thing I do is go underneath here, and the bearing wheel um, here on the bottom. If you see on the right hand side of that, there's some brown gooky stuff. That is where um, that's the glue that held in a set screw. So there was basically a Phillips screw that went into a hole right there. I removed it, which then allows you to pull the bearing um, um, the actual shaft out. And um, you can kind of see the, the notch in the middle. That's where that sh screw goes into. And if you don't take that out, then you can't pull this up because that, uh, that screw keeps you from doing so. Anyway, I cleaned out the bearing well with um, Q-tip really good. Lubed it up with some... Uh, some really lightweight oil that I've talked about in other videos. If you'll notice, I greased um, with some white lithium grease this whole uh, this whole spindle thing, um, or the actuator for the uh, turn tab, turn to return the tone arm. Any rate, um, then I got ready to power it up, and let me show you what happens here. All right, let me show you what I've got going on here. If you'll notice the motor, I turn this thing on 33 RPM and the motor starts spinning appropriately. So I focus on it so you can see it real well. I come back over here, I turn it to 45 and the motor basically stops. And if you try to spin it, it, it wants to do it, but it's not. 33 runs good and strong. Um, you come over here to 45 and it does. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean these switches and see if that helps uh, get anything going here. So basically, a little bit of uh, deoxit D5 up here in this switch that controls the, uh, that was the one I was turning with 3345. Also sprayed inside of this, which is the pitch control. Notorious, uh, the pitch controls on these for getting uh, grimy and causing issues with the uh, turntable not spinning um, equally all the time, so uh, consistently per se. Um, so if it's not turning at all, let's go to this guy. If you're trying to adjust the uh, pitch on this thing to get the, uh, with the light here, to get it exactly synced up to the right speed, and you can't ever do so, this is, uh, this is the one you want to try to clean a little bit. At any rate, we've cleaned that thing out. Let's turn it to 33 here. You can see it's spinning. Turn it off, you can see it stop. Hang on one second. I took a magic marker and painted a little black stripe on the top of that wheel. So you can see it spinning there with that little black. Um, notice on 45 now. Takes off and runs well. It was really just the switch and the contacts in it were dirty. A lot of these turntables, you find them, they've been sitting in basements, they've been sitting out in buildings, up in attics, and they've just drawn moisture and the contacts, the metal parts have kind of gotten corroded over time. And so that's, uh, that's what it calls this. Let's get the platter back on it here real quick and see if we can get the speed to adjust properly. All right, the belt that came off of this thing, pretty dry, brittle, um, kind of stiff. It's going to go back to the wayside and keep my uh, turntable and reel-to-reel -reel belts here. And I don't, I don't keep tons of them, but somewhere in here. Huh. We have an SL23 Techniques turntable belt, and uh, I worked on a lot of these things over time. I'm going to teach you a trade secret here. 
today. Um, see this little bag right here? Uh, if the FBI ever comes in, I'm, I had to label it talc or I might get in trouble, but it uh, looks like a big bag of white powder. But what this is, is uh, it's plain old talc that you can get at any drugstore. And you will see guys on eBay sell these things labeled premium turntable belt talc. <laughs> um, it's really just plain old talc. And uh, what you do with it, let me show you. If you'll notice my uh, SL23 belt is now inside this bag. Shake it around. There's not much talc in here, just a little bit. Um, and the goal is basically to, uh, to cover the belt in talc. You'll be surprised how many slipping turntable belt problems get solved by putting a little bit of talc on them. It also helps, uh, I would say, keeps the, keeps the belt, um, helps it last longer, and keeps just a little bit of uh, friction lubrication on the uh, moving parts as well. So I'll take this out and put it back on now and show you. All right. Okay, the goal here is when the belt comes out, it's not globbed up with talc. Um, just has a slight light coating of talc all over it. And that's how we're going to put it back onto the table. In case you're not familiar with how to put a belt back on the turntable, put the belt on the uh, platter first, like this. Grab the platter upside down. Bring it over here. Find the, uh, find the spindle. And then you basically come over here to the side where the belt and the motor come together and you can use about anything but I use this little uh, hook kind of dentist thing you just grab a little piece of the belt then pull it out here and voila you have the belt installed on the platter properly and uh, it will spin around quite smoothly then um, whoa. let's uh, You'll notice running quite smooth and well right now. Let's see if we can get the, uh, the pitch adjusted right. So it'll be the second notch up here. It's jumping around a little bit. I think I'm going to clean this pitch knob uh, again. I don't know if I got in there good enough. All right. If you'll notice, I, I pop this little cover off. And down in here is the shaft for the pitch control. Um, happens to be a, uh, I use a 7 16 inch uh, nut driver here on this thing. And uh, take the nut right off of it. You may wonder why am I doing that. Because I want to push the potentiometer out the bottom of this thing as well. Um, so I can flick it back up here. I want to get it out so I can get to this side of it so I can spray it really well. And if you'll notice, there's really not much of an opening up here where I had tried to spray it earlier by just reaching the, uh, the red hose around. But if you flip this thing uh, this way, you'll notice there's a great big opening right here as well as an opening right here I was able to spray in and get, get down in there real good and uh, get it deoxed. So um, I'm going to put this thing back in now and I'll show you. All right. If you notice the one kind of moving to the right, right where my fingernail is at. That's the 45. So as I start to turn the pitch control now, what happens? Thing locks dead on. If I turn it too far, it starts going back to the left. But um, I'm able to get this thing to lock on dead right now and stay still. And that is what you want out of a turntable. That is how you lock the uh, the, the motor speed uh, synced up with this uh, what it is a little Xeon uh, strobe light that uh, is set to a known frequency, so you're basically seeking those things up. So we are on at, 30, at 45. If we take it to 33 now, it's kind of hard to see with the camera down in here. Um, but similar story, we can uh, we can get the 33 to lock on now as well. And stay still. Perfect. Do a little bit more cleaning on this thing uh, so I can get it to 
stabilize this a little bit more than that. All right, you see these two little potentiometers right here? They're on the back of a board that mounts right here. And then what you do is you come down through the top here. You'll notice, uh, it'll tell you right here, it's how you adjust 33 and 45. So you get them in sync here. And what we've got going on is uh, these little things are uh, corroded. <laughs> So I'm going to clean these and then I'll show you what we'll do. All right. Sorry I couldn't show what I just did. It was just, uh, I couldn't hold the camera and do it. But here's what I did, just to walk you through it. I started with the 33 side. And what I did was I kind of put this pitch control in the very middle of, of its full swing left or right. And I turned it on 33 here. And what I did then, if you'll notice, um, the very very bottom one down there it's hard to see it but it's locked dead on that's the 33 one and what I did once I had it this pitch control in the middle and this thing adjusted via the little thing down here so I kept having to move the turntable off adjust just a little bit turn it back on but eventually I got it to the point that 33 the one at the very very bottom down there's locked dead on then it was a matter of turning it to 45 and adjusting the uh, 45 control over here. And if you'll notice, 45 is locked pretty much dead on. I mean, it's moving slightly, but no big deal. Just a slight tweak of this thing and it's dead on. So go back to 33, down in the bottom there. It's dead on as well. And that is how you get a turntable working properly that doesn't seem to want to sink. Sometimes it's the potentiometers in here that need cleaning. Sometimes it's the, this potentiometer, sometimes it's this switch. In this case, it was all of the above. Um, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to put the rubber platter back on it. Uh, check out the needle that's on it. It seems pretty good. It's just a cheap low-end. Uh, spin this thing around here. But uh, Audio Technica, that's like a $15 cart. But you know what? For what I'm wanting to do with this table, um, perfect little unit and... Uh, get it going. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll be back more with uh, soon with more videos.